our exclusive Team 10 investigation into this local widow's fight to take back her home from an accused squatter. This, this house is in the college area. This is the battleground. Investigator Adam Rakusin is here with the new developments that we've uncovered and brought you this, this story last week. Adam, the accused squatter is now trying to rent out rooms in that very house. Yes, she is, and you don't have to look too far to find it. Here's a listing on Craigslist that we found. Room for rent in the college area. There's two streets right where this house is located. I talked to a woman who says she rents a room in this house, and she says she's not the only one to have moved in. This is the hinges. She took the door off. I had a lock on my door with my own keys. That's the door. A door pulled from its hinges, stains on the ground, junk piling up in corners. There was, like, borax all over the carpet. Um, pee, dog pee all over the carpet. It was just disgusting. These are the conditions Teresa Muhammad says she lives in. She says the person responsible for the mess, her landlord. I've offered to help clean for her. I've offered to help clean it, have a garage sale. She keeps saying, okay, okay, and then just never does it. Teresa says she moved into the house in the college area at the start of September. She says she saw an ad on Craigslist for a room to rent and the price was right. The rent would be four fifty a month, so I moved in. But last week, Teresa saw this Team 10 investigation. Fran and Alan Breslauer were married more than 60 years. About a woman who she says rented her the room, Cheryl Shirell. I was shocked. I was shocked, mad, I was angry, I felt lied to, betrayed. Sherelle was a live-in caregiver hired to help 90-year-old friend Breslauer take care of her husband, Alan, during the final months of his life. When he died, Breslauer told Team 10 Sherelle refused to move out. I think that she's heartless. She's heartless. How can you do that to a 90-year-old woman? Breslauer told 10 News it wasn't long before their relationship went south. Both women filed restraining orders against each other. Sherelle won hers, convincing a judge Breslauer shoved and punched her. A claim Breslauer denies. A legal war now being waged by both sides. Mom keeps asking, is it over now? And honey, can you fix this? And I have to tell her, no, Mom, it's, it's not over. In fact, it's going to keep dragging out for a while. It breaks my heart to tell her that. That's Breslauer's daughter, Jan. She's a lawyer, and even she struggles to explain how it's possible for Sherelle to still be in the house. It all boils down to California's complex laws regarding living employees, what it takes to terminate those agreements, and how long it takes to argue your point in court. Regardless of the outcome of her mom's case, Jan wants to change the law, so something like this can never happen to another family. If a person gets into a home where they have no right to be there, the law bends over backwards to assume they have a right to be there. And as for Teresa, she's now facing her own legal battle with Sherelle. Just hours after she did that interview with 10 News, she was arrested. She's now facing potential charges of felony vandalism and elder abuse. Teresa says Sherelle made up the entire story about her to the police, and now she's got nowhere to live either. Reporting live in the newsroom tonight, Adam Marcusen, Team 10.